One of the most popular videos on this channel has been on winter survival tips. So, considering that summer in Lithuania has its own dangers and warnings, I thought it would be good to provide some tips for surviving a Lithuanian summer. Joining me again today is German medical student and social media sensation Jesse. So let's get started. The first piece of advice is just basic sun safety. There's nothing new and nothing specific to Lithuania, of course, but it's bright here and the UV index can be high at times, so you'll want to make sure to protect your skin from the risk of skin cancer with plenty of sunscreen or long clothing to cover up. Next is something that is perhaps the most important and potentially life-saving, but to discuss it in detail, I'll pass it off to Jesse. Thanks, Chris. As the weather warms up, you might have noticed when strolling around green areas like parks or forests, Lithuania is not only home for a lot of foreigners, but also a lot of ticks. Therefore, these little bugs are something to be aware of. In Lithuania, the two most common tick-borne diseases are Lyme disease and TBE, which is short for tick-borne encephalitis. The good thing is that there is an approved vaccine for TBE and something you should consider getting if you plan to be in Lithuania's parks and forests. What I also like to mention is that Lithuania is one of the countries with the most highest incidence of tick-borne encephalitis cases. If you have not been vaccinated with a tick-borne encephalitis vaccine, I highly suggest you to do so, because tick-borne diseases can, in very unfortunate cases, end in paralysis and worst case in death. What is really cool, in my opinion, is that you can even get vaccinated in pharmacies here in Lithuania by so-called walk-in vaccination clinics. You simply go to the pharmacy and say you would like to get vaccinated against TBE and then you can receive the shot right there without any appointment. Or if they are busy, you might be asked to schedule an appointment. You can also schedule an appointment at your family doctor or in a Poliklinika for getting your shot. We will provide some links in the video description to places where you can get your shot. Now you are probably wondering if one shot is enough to be protected. Unfortunately, that is not the case and that is why I would like to show you how the primary vaccination schedule looks like. The primary vaccination schedule consists of three vaccine shots. Depending which scheme you choose, it can take from five months until one year to gain complete protection. But please don't panic if you haven't been vaccinated against ticks yet. After you receive the second shot, you already have some immunization and a partial immunization is always better than no immunization at all. If you already have the primary vaccination completed, then you should get a booster shot every 5 years when you are younger than 60 years and if you are older than 60 years, then it is suggested to get a booster shot every 3 years. Vaccinated or not, you should ask close friends or family members to look out for ticks on your body once you come back from your outer trip. Sometimes ticks hide in places where you can't see them. I once had a tick behind my ear and I didn't see it and my mother found it thankfully. If you have been bitten by a tick, please do not attempt to remove the tick without the necessary equipment. There are certain devices which can help you remove the tick completely. And I also suggest you to further observe the bite for inflammation signs such as pain, heat, redness and or swelling. The most important skin change which you could observe is a very special kind of rash called erythema migrans. It looks like a target and if you see this bullseye target pattern in the area of the tick bite, please go immediately to a doctor because this is an early sign of Lyme disease. The earlier you go, the better are the treatment options. Additional information will be included in the video description, so make sure to check it out. And now back to Chris for our third piece of summer survival advice. Thanks for that, Jesse. The next tip is a little less serious and has to do with unexpected weather. Yes, Lithuanian summers, although short, are hot and sunny. But of course, we're still in Lithuania, where summers can also be rainy. So prepare yourself by either checking the weather forecast before going out, or by just bringing a small umbrella with you if you're heading out with a bag or backpack. Even if it's a clear and sunny morning, the weather can easily change later in the day and rains can come in heavy. But at least it's a warm rain, right? And when you get rainy weather, you're bound to get puddles. So the fourth small tip is to look out for big puddles close to the sidewalk. If a car is coming in fast, you could easily get sprayed from head to toe in dirty puddle water. 
and for those staying here long term, you should prepare your home for hot weather. Many apartments in Lithuania don't come with air conditioning. They've never really needed it, and in earlier decades didn't have access to air conditioners anyways. But with the changing climate, some Lithuanian summers can get very hot, including in recent years. In fact, in June of 2021, a new national heat record was set. This was in the town of Alitas at 34 degrees Celsius. So, to make sure you're comfortable in your home, it might be wise to get yourself a fan at a minimum. If you wait until a heat wave, it might be too late, since everyone else in the country will also be searching stores for fans. This is what happened last year, leaving many places sold out for a brief period of time. Another way to beat the heat is to avoid consuming hot food and drinks. Having a hot soup is bound to have you sweating in no time. But it's a good chance to, if you haven't already, try Lithuania's famous Šaltybašče. This cold soup is delicious and won't make you feel warmer than you already are. Another good thing to know is that summer brings with it a lot more bicycles and scooters. Surviving the summer might also mean being extra careful walking around, since there are also so many more cyclists and scooter riders out on the streets. And for the next tip, I'll pass it back to Jesse. Hello again. Good weather. Let's go for some beers in the city. Yes, we tend to drink more alcohol once the weather is getting better. What I want you to know is that you should be careful about your alcohol consumption in hot weather. You might wonder why is she doing such a big deal out of it. Easy explanation. Alcohol is a diuretic, meaning it dehydrates your body and interferes with the ability to regulate your body temperature. Alcohol works also as a vasodilator, meaning it dilates your blood vessels at this warm weather, and therefore you have a higher risk of passing out. I would rather recommend to grab an ice cream or an ice latte to stay cool and prevent any dizziness and dehydration. Thanks again, Jesse. And our last bit of advice isn't so much about survival as it is about simply enjoying one of the best parts about Lithuania, the lakes and nature. One popular thing Lithuanians like to do is go to the many lakes you can see across the country. And it's something foreigners should consider doing too. Grab your hat, sunscreen, sunglasses, and find a place to enjoy the nice weather. Find a nice shady spot to prevent any sun damage and sunburn and stay hydrated. We'll include more information about lakes in the description but that's all the advice we have for surviving and enjoying the summer in Lithuania. If you have any additional tips, feel free to add them in the comment section. My thanks again to Jessie for the collaboration, and again, you can check out her social media channels here with links down in the description. Thank you so much for watching, stay cool, and we will see you next time.